Well, welcome back to another episode of Buffalo Happy Hour. Mike, what are you doing? It's episode 33. Work was insane today. <laughs> You're livid over your weekend. Uh, Amazon failed you miserably. Mm-hmm. We got good whiskey to drink. We got a lot to talk about. Probably going to offend somebody. Probably. And, uh, you know, we're going live, man. Oh, yeah. Kind of. Jeff Bezos delivered the package to my house himself, and he said, peasant, here you go. Yeah. Like, perfect. And kicked it into your house. Yeah. Yeah. Ordered a new monitor, new computer screen for editing to be easier. Open up the box. I saw, like, a little mark on it. I'm like, this thing is destroyed. I can tell already. I can, right now, I can tell without even turning it on, destroyed. And Gina was like, ah, maybe, maybe not. Maybe there's a piece of plastic over top. I'm like, okay. Someone's got her hopes up. Let's try it out. Turn it on. Shattered. So pissed. Then obviously call customer support and, oh, we're sorry for the inconvenience. I'm like, I get it. Like, you're not, you don't care about me. Just put me through for the refund and let's get on with our day. So pause. Take a deep breath. Because I know that as you continue the story, you're just going to go to another level. Oh, yeah. So take a deep breath. Onward. The frick. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I mean, <clears throat> to be honest, I'm not, I'm, I'm livid. I'm mad. I'm inconvenienced. But I'm not pissed off. There's a, there's a difference. There's a line that I have where I go from like, okay, I'm happy, then I'm okay, then I'm extremely livid, and I'm not livid. So I, I'm just I'm just a little inconvenienced, you know. It's yeah. just why why was that box destroyed when it was brought to my house? You know that there's a fragile thing inside, fragile, as some people say. Ace Ventura delivered it, dude. Right? Yeah. He's like, here, catch. I'm like I'm not even outside. Don't throw it. It was an Acer monitor, 24 inches, and just destroyed. We'll make it work. Disappointed. We will. We will make it work, but it'll take some time. But here we are, man. Here we are. How are you doing? How's work? Work good. Work's busy. There's a lot of people reaching out over uh, concerns because, of course, at the end of the week, we are starting to reopen. So now everybody's trying to figure out a way to make everyone happy. What is in phase one? Do you know? Construction, essential construction, um, large agricultural locations, like farmers can go back and do stuff, um, which I don't think they stopped, honestly. I think they were considered essential because they produce food. Right. But uh, things like that, yeah. I mean, it's not it's it's not what we want. It's not the bills. It's not hair salons. It's not... MLB announced today that they're starting. They're going to start their season. Yeah, it pissed off a lot of players, apparently. Yeah. But what are you going to do? That's what happens when you work for the man. Stick it to the man, bro. <laughs> Stick it to the man. So how does that? How does this phasing reopening affect you, or does it not really? Do, are people going to be buying more filters now on a more consistent basis because of all this happening, or no? They've always been just due to codes, regulations, and gotcha. then their personal standards. Uh, the people that I deal with directly are responsible for the facility that they work for. So there's an extreme amount of pride that they take because it's their building, right? right. Um, indirectly, it's their building. So they go back and forth and say, look, are there potential upgrades that we can throw in? Is there anything that I can plug into a wall that will help? Um, you know, basically, what can I do to show the people when they come back to work that we quote unquote did something, you know? So it's that conversation all day long. Right. But it's a cool conversation to have because it differs person to person like a food processing plant might call and then a commercial um like workspace might call where it's just cubicles then it might go to a school then it might go to a hospital like it's all different types of people and locations are fun if you're a business can you upgrade to a different filter to like kind of weed this out a little bit better or no okay you can but you just got to make sure that your system can handle it because if you drive if if you create too much static it'll drive the fan into a whole mess of issues so there's ways to do it but you can't just go from a filter that allows a b and c through to a filter that allows nothing through because you'll just destroy your entire system so i i've heard a lot of businesses reopening and a lot of their plan to reopen revolves around like keeping doors ajar that way you don't have to touch the door or sanitizing stations and all that but it's from my perspective i think it's a little bit reactive Right, because the virus is still going to come in if your filters aren't up to snuff. 
Or am I just making stuff up? What are you trying to you, ask? You know what I'm saying? Because, like, I'm not hearing a lot about how they're cleaning the air better. It's more of how we can clean the surfaces that it might be on. Yeah. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's right. not a proactive, let's make sure the virus doesn't come in. It's the virus is here whether you like it or not. Let's sanitize. So I'm not hearing too much about let's upgrade our filters and do all that stuff like in this planning to reopen everything back up. It's more of let's sanitize. Yeah, from the news, I see what you're saying. From yeah. like a news perspective, yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's because that's that's only what people see during the entire shutdown. Those same people that run those businesses were calling us. Gotcha. With the infrastructure stuff, saying, "Hey, how can we either stay up to code or beat the code?" And then, have there been any changes in codes? Like, what can we do to increase filtration throughout our entire building? Things like that. So that that you know both conversations have been had mm-hmm. but then of course they got to deal with the direct person to person contact but at the end of the day you're right like you can't do too much like a plastic divider between you and the cashier yeah you yeah. know like air goes all around right yeah yeah that's i mean it'll prevent me from spitting in the cashier's mouth i guess but other than right. that right it's still gonna get to him if i have it right and my question is, how long are they going to keep that? Is that a forever thing? Or are they just going to be like, oh, we'll do this for like six months. And then when we forget about it, then we'll take it down. Right. I mean, what? Come on. Mm-hmm. You know, but yeah. Are it's... you going to get the antibody test when it comes out? Or like when you're able to or no? Yeah, I actually might get it sooner rather than later. I'm just curious because they charge your insurance. Mm-hmm. I have insurance, but I'm just curious like what it costs. If there's a copay or not. I don't even know who to ask. But yeah. I was thinking about that over the weekend. Are you? Well, Gina went today. Journey. Journey. Yeah, Journey went today. So if we'll see if I go. Because if she comes back and she's had it, then I obviously had it. Yeah. I'm in the same house as her. Yeah. If she comes back and she didn't have it, chances are I didn't have it either. Or else she would have got it. So I'm I'm not sure. She has better insurance than I do, so let her do it first. <laughs> so yeah. uh we'll see where she goes and then we'll see if I go after, but I, I don't think so. She said that they do it blood drawn now. They don't stick mm-hmm. the cotton swab into your face mouth. That's and for try COVID. To That's for COVID. The antibodies. Oh, antibody blood. test is different? Okay, yeah. gotcha. Two different tests. So my Oh yeah, obviously, because your antibodies live in your bloodstream, not your not your nasal cavity. Correct. Nailed it. Yeah. Biology. So the my coworkers also, two of them already that I work with every day. Uh, well, every day at work, so Monday through Friday, they both got the antibody test done. So whatever their results come back as, there's there's no way. You know what I mean? That I wouldn't get the same result, which whatever result they get, because I'm also in hospitals. I'm also in all these other places, and I've been exposed to it, but I've never experienced a symptom. I've never been sick. The only thing that I've experienced is an increase in sinus activity, and that's because our weather can't figure out what it wants to do. <laughs> yeah, it so snows I get a, yesterday and yeah, sunny today. Yeah, so it's it goes from snowing to 50, and then my nose is just like, I'm just going to not allow you to breathe. Yeah. And then all of a sudden it warms up, and it goes, time to drain everything. So it's just, that's that's my hell. <laughs> but what are we drinking today? <sighs> so today we went to the convenience store, or the convenience store. I always call them convenience stores for some reason. Just call it that. Whatever. We went to the liquor store. And uh, at, before that, where did we go before? Before we went to, come on, oh, to get new cameras. We didn't even talk about that, man. No, let's talk about that too. Yeah. So dialing it back a second. We got new cameras. So hopefully everyone can see us because like, see, I got my phone with me. Mike has his phone with him. We're not using them to record anymore. So that's great. There's a lot of issues when it came to the phone. One storage, the, the storage capacity on the phones weren't as good. The iPhone versus Android, because Android's obviously better. So like the the quality difference is <laughs> the quality difference was there between the, the two devices. So we went out, we bought two of the same camcorders. So it'll hopefully be the same picture for you. Uh, and it'll just make it look a little bit more professional, especially when we go on these interviews once this run is done. Uh, it, it'll just be better from here on out. So uh, I hope everybody likes it. Let us know if you see a difference or if we didn't say anything, you would have noticed at all. Probably the latter. <laughs> There's probably no way that people notice. These things are sick, though, because I got a 90 times zoom. Yeah. So when we incorporate other content, you'll be able to uh, enjoy some other features mm-hmm. that come with it. So We went to go pick these up. Kids were total bros there. They're like, yeah, man, sick. Doing a podcast sounds good. Yeah. Uh, and yeah, so that was cool. And then after that, we went to the liquor store. Uh, what, what do you keep looking at? You're making me nervous. Here, turn me up. I'm quiet, bro. Got to make sure that. Yeah, dude, project your voice a little bit more. Come on. 
<clears throat> um, yeah, clear that throat out, bro. There we go. Um, so after that, we went to the liquor store to get some booze so we can keep filming for everybody. And we tried to stick again with a local, local distillery here. And this one is called Grist and Saw. It's actually from the Hanoi. 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 How do you pronounce it? Hanoi. Are you, you can't ask me these things on the spot, man. I can't even spell Hanoi. cork. H-O-N-E-O-Y-E. People know what it is. It's Hanoi Falls or whatever, how you ever pronounce it. But it's from that distillery, which is about 10 minutes south of Rochester. Um, or 30 minutes south of Rochester, I'm sorry. Uh, near the Finger Lakes region. It's interesting. They share the same water supply and uh, water as Black Button does. So if you remember from their interview with Black Button from with Jason Garrett, they get their water from um, Hemlock Lake, which is that little dapper do that we have over there. Um, so that's what we use for the distill, uh, distilled water when you put it in here. But they get their water from Hemlock Lakes and Canada's Lake, which give you just a different... It might be small, but it gives you a different flavor than the other, like Lake Erie or Lake Ontario or wherever other places are getting their water from. Different minerals, different, different vitamins. Vitamins, yeah. But when you distill it all down, does it really matter at that point? I mean, apparently it does for so. Christ and Saw. Yeah, and Christ and Saw. The <laughs> jaw saw. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so they, they draw their water from those two lakes. This one in particular, it's an Empire Rye. So do you remember what Empire Rye is? It's... A whiskey made with nothing but New York ingredients. Yep. So it's interesting because this is a this is in the same vein as you would consider like Tennessee whiskey or Kentucky bourbon, and that's what New York is trying to do with this particular whiskey. Now is that you have Kentucky bourbon, you have Tennessee whiskey, and now New York is trying to get themselves on the map by making this subcategory called Empire Rye, which, like you said, take a sip. Which, like you said, is everything has to be made within, or all the grains have to be from New York. So they're trying to put this on a map with the Tennessee whiskey and Kentucky bourbon, which is kind of cool living in New York. I mean, it's nice to call something New York other than just the taxes, you know. So you have this beautiful Empire Rye. Everything's there. Um, they have a chart level three on this which is something that you might be picking up a little bit of the, the sweetness, but not too, too much. Um, and this is 96 proof. So th this is a hefty boy. Well, see you later. Glad I ate lunch. It's good though, isn't it? It actually is good. Um, it's not what I expected it to taste like. Mm. The grain for this is actually all grown next door to the distillery. That's Which cool. is cool because Empire Rye just has to be grown in New York State. Right. But this geographic area is so small because they're just doing everything next door. So th this is really interesting. And it was founded in the summer of 2013. Nice. So they're new. Yeah. Good very, for them. That's very, exciting. Uh, they've had quite a bit of batches. So they've done – normally when you think of batches and barrel numbers and all that stuff, they do one huge batch and then put it all into different barrels huge. and all that stuff. But what they've done is they've done smaller barrel counts, but more batches. And each batch, they've changed the direction of it just a little bit. So batch one and batch, I don't know what this is. It doesn't say on here. I think it's 13 or something are very different from what I've seen online. Uh, because they changed the makeup of uh, what was in batch one versus batch 13 quite differently. Um, a lot of reviews that I've read so far have batch one and batch two not like not as good and and this is a very well-rounded product from what i've read nice from like all their other batches so it's really interesting i love the flavor to this uh with a typical 85 percent rye 15 percent malted barley you would really expect that punch in the face of that rye and peppercorn sure but this is very sweet to me it's sweet but it's dude there's this is oily mm -hmm. yeah that's what that's yeah that's definitely one of the huge, like you can just see it on this glass. Yeah, it's insane how much oil is inside of this. Yeah, very good. Yeah, I, I was, I'm surprised. <sighs> okay, and then also what we got going on here, we're doing some. You're, you're repping Patagonia and some Clemson because you don't want to take off your hat. 
Correct. What was the feedback? Do people want you to cut it or do people want you to keep it long? So far, people want to keep it long. Yeah. I got two comments uh, almost initially that said, leave the hair. But I also got a comment that said, leave the hair, but cut the hair. <laughs> so I'm going to take that as leave the top, but trim around the ears and back of the neck, which I'm all about. Or that means cut the top and leave the back. Go full Joe Exotic over here. Could. Still haven't watched it. But yeah, dude, grow that mullet out. We'll see what I... I don't know. We'll see what I do, huh? And I'm uh, I'm repping some uh, Beard Mountain up here. Awesome beard brand where they create oils. Not a sponsor. Could be. And then also Bri Brothers. Our boys. Our, our boys came out with this amazing sweatshirt here. That's what I'm talking this about. This is so comfortable. And they have been quarantined, obviously, just like everybody else. But they've taken this time to create as many beers as they possibly can. So within the past week, I think they've made four different beers. They've brewed four different beers. And the one, uh, the one that they did was a their Punch Bowl series, which we talked about, which includes a little bit of lactose, but it was strawberry and vanilla frosting. It was so delicious. Dude, the boys come up with some good drinks, yeah, dude. Do. Yeah, they do. I'm stoked very, to collab with them. Good. Yeah. Once this is over with, we're just going to have a riot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Hopefully this gets over soon. But yeah, this is the comfiest sweatshirt I've ever worn in my life. So I'm t- dude, it looks good. Thanks, man. I like that. Yeah. It's a nice like bold print, too. Yeah. It actually like pops really well with that color scheme. Hell yeah. They do a good job, man. I mean, they're smart. Nailed it. Nailed it. Nailed it. Hell yeah. So what's what else is going on, Mike? Well, you had a post that we may may not get super into. Probably we're going to get into it. We're just going to say screw it and get into it. The... Plandemic viral YouTube. Why? You're not supposed to say that word. The plandemic YouTube video that caused people all over the place to go in a huge fuss was a riot to watch. Mm -hmm. So there's people that watched it and then immediately took it as fact. Then there's people that are involved in the medical field and science field and said she's someone that should not be trusted. Uh, she's not even credited as a doctor anymore. Like her license got revoked or some craziness, um, which I don't know the specifics on, but they basically just went off. And then they're like, you shouldn't believe this. It's not all factual. Get your research first. And then there's people in the middle that watched it, did research, and then formulated their own opinion. And then there's people that don't even know what I'm talking about. (laughs) (laughs) I have a feeling that's a very small percentage. I feel like everybody watched that. Dude, it was uh, it was viewed pretty heavily. But so, that's just, I mean, a lot of it, too, is just because it's interesting of what's going on. You know what I mean? Like, there's always conspiracy theories. So anytime there's a hot topic, people are going to watch something involving a conspiracy theory on that topic. So. Yeah. What What are your thoughts? Because my thoughts are already known pretty much. I mean, I made a post about it. But yeah. what are your thoughts? I'm still in the same same boat you know because i'm also dealing with it at work so i'm understanding a little bit more than other people regarding the stats and the numbers and how it actually works in in the world with airborne particulates and stuff but there's i think some of it hit dead on and then i think other parts of it were just like (laughs) i don't know if it's a conspiracy but just kind of like a little too far yeah where you're like all right i'm gonna sift through that because there's probably not I think it's too biased. I think it's more opinion than anything. Mm -hmm. So I disregarded it. But I I don't know. Like, I'm I'm in the middle, man. I'm I'm pretty much dead set in the middle. Yeah. I mean, every – and this is kind of getting into my Facebook post that got a a lot of attention. But it wasn't anything crazy. Basically, what I want people to start understanding is there's a way to view news articles. The first way is you are dead set on what you believe in and you want to find articles that prove your point. And that is a very dangerous road to go down because you don't have any of the opposite viewpoints to level you out. You can really Google anything that you want and you'll find an article on that. I can guarantee it. Hitler was a good guy. You can Google that and you can probably pull up so many articles about how he was a great human being. But that, that's not like both sides of the story, obviously. With this situation, this pandemic, if you're watching that video and that's your only source of knowledge, you're going to be like, oh my God, I can't believe that. Fauci's an idiot and all that stuff. 
But if you understand both sides of the story and even take the human out of it, I don't care about her. I didn't do any research on her because I don't care what she has to say. I don't care about her opinions. I care about the facts within that video that corroborate with the other different news articles that I've read, listened to, and all that stuff. So me posting that video wasn't a, oh, I approve her character. It was more of look at the facts because there's some facts in there that are glaring and it's okay to question those facts. If you're questioning facts, that doesn't mean that you're a conspiracy theorist. It just means that new evidence was brought to light that you can look at and you can question and you can start asking questions on. You know what's interesting is our generation was brought up on getting hammered through schooling <laughs> on work cited pages. Yeah. From early on, dude, like DBQs had to be cited mm -hmm. and there was, you had to prove what you were saying. And I think now, I mean, my dad's generation gets in trouble for it. Well, they'll just like, they'll post stuff and just go on rants. And then it's blatantly, obviously false, mm -hmm. but it fits a narrative that they agree with or, you know, whatever. But, and then our generation sits there and we're just like rolling our eyes. Like, oh my God, that's not, that's yeah. not what this is. You can't do that. Calm down. <laughs> like... <laughs> read first you know and then it all ties into this now where people have their opinion everybody's got an opinion i mean especially our generation for mm -hmm. christ's sake but at the same time we are we do a good job at taking a step back and saying well let me just google this really quick and then see what does come up and then we'll check snoops we'll check WikiLeaks, we'll check what other source we can that's what we feel legitimate. And the first thing we do is check where did it come from? Is it .com? Right. Is it .org? Is it .gov? Because if it's .gov and .org, it's almost swept under the rug as legit. So we'll just like, we'll take it as is. Um, it's just really interesting to see the differences between I'm, us and people that we talk to. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I mean... It's uh, it's an interesting time, dude. It was funny because as I was watching that, though, now being a professional podcaster like you and I are, I was looking at this interview, and I was looking at how they're doing the camera work and the audio work and cutting in and out to different like doctors giving their spiel because understanding that this woman, her credibility might not be there. There were doctors' videos in that whole video who corroborated her story to some extent. Right. So, like... You and this goes into a different point that I'll touch on after, but you can't pick and choose who you trust, and, and I'll get back to that. But I looked at this video, and it really, really bothered me that he cut or whoever it was, whoever his producer was, cut to his face while the woman was talking to watch him like nod and agree. Like I'll cut to you or I'll cut to me if like one of us is laughing really hard because I find it funny. But he, she was just talking, and then he was just like. While she was still talking, and it showed his face. I'm like, what are you doing? This is giving me no, like, why? Why are you doing this? But anyway, kind of going back to that part that I alluded to. There, there's people now, for some reason, and especially with the uh, also current events of Tara Reid and Joe Biden's sexual allegations or whatever that is. People choose to say, let's trust all these individuals. But then as soon as the tables turn, they're like, well, not this person. That's not right. Like when this COVID stuff started, everyone was like, yeah, trust all doctors. Doctors know what's going on. They're the frontline workers, which they are. But then you look at this video and you have all these doctors videos submitting to this podcast or whatever, YouTube or whatever it is. And then people are like, well, you can't trust these doctors. Like, why not? Why can't you trust these doctors? You can trust your doctors because they agree with you, but you can't trust these because they disagree with you. And same thing with Biden's thing. Like, you can trust the woman who accused Brett Kavanaugh, but you can't trust Tara Reid. Even on a simpler level, if you and I were both doctors researching the same topic and we come to different conclusions, who did, who's trusted? Right. We're both doctors. Mm -hmm. We both did credible research. We have findings. We have data that supports it. So who do you trust? Right. And it's the same thing with this. And people just pick and choose based off of opinion and their personal feelings of what makes them feel better by human nature. And that's that's the root of debates. Yeah. That's why if you take a an argument from one side and you take an argument from the other side, and this is how the judicial system works and justice system works, you take both sides of these arguments, you take away all their opinions because their opinions don't matter. 
that's influenced by their personal biases, their beliefs, and all that stuff. You take both of these two arguments, and then you get rid of the opinions and look at the facts. That The facts that align are most likely going to be the true facts mm-hmm. because that's the stuff that you can't make up. Mm-hmm. Whereas the, the character insult and all that stuff, that those are all beliefs and opinions that don't really matter when you're looking at the facts. Yep. And that's what people need to start learning how to do is take two separate articles from two extremely different viewpoints and try to boil down to what they feel is true based on the facts. It's the same with nutrition. There's doctors that think keto is great. There's mm-hmm. doctors that think keto is horrible. Right. But at the end of the day, chicken is still a protein source. Mm-hmm. So it's, and both doctors can agree on that. Right. So you have to sift through. I don't even think you can eat chicken during keto, but the point is the point. So it's, it's no, interesting. You can eat bacon because, though, man, because bacon's healthy. Oh yeah, that's right. You can have saturated fats, can't you? Oh yeah, you can have chicken wings. So you can have chicken. Um, but yeah, so it's, it's the same thing. I mean, people... <clears throat> People take everything at face value, and they don't take anything with a grain of salt, and then they get offended. But it's it's uh, it's wild. But it leads into the the cycle that you found throughout this entire quarantine, and it was a list of six things. Yep. So the first thing is this is our this is our opinion. There's some facts in here, but this is our opi- or at least my opinion, maybe not yours, but it was the observation you made yeah. based off of the last 2 months. Mm-hmm. So the first thing was they shut the they as in I don't know gov- whoever. Basically this is what happened. The the economy was shut down, people stayed home. They were forced to stay home. Then hospitals were overwhelmed and there was no elective surgeries. And then step 3, the hospitals without covid numbers for furloughed their staff because there's no elective surgeries to bring money in yeah. yeah step four all deaths were considered covid deaths because it led to more money because of how the healthcare system works mm-hmm. step five the numbers rise and then step six the quarantine continues and then it just keeps going through the cycle yeah so the, the issue with this situation here and it, it's tough to it's tough to understand but this is corroborated. Some of the facts in here are corroborated by, I know you just took a sip. Um, during like the White House, House press briefings from Dr. Burks, she stated, for fact, hospitals get $7,000 extra if they label somebody a COVID case and $39,000 extra if they put them on a ventilator. So there's incentives for these hospitals, n- not like Ill, Ill incentives, like they're not doing it to be like, I don't even know how to explain that. Well, right. But basically, they wanted to fund the places that needed the funding. Right. But what it caused was every hospital doing it because Mm -hmm. they wanted the money. Right. So if you were an overweight individual that suffered, like, a heart attack and you died, but you even had on your, like, last last day on earth shortness of breath, they didn't even test you for that. They would consider you COVID and then you would be a COVID related death, which would then increase the COVID numbers. But then this increase in COVID numbers make Andrew Cuomo say, Oh my gosh, Buffalo is terrible. Look at their COVID numbers rising. We need to keep them locked down. And then you have these hospitals that are continuing to lay off workers. Then you have these hospitals that are going to say more cases are COVID that way they can afford the workers that they have, which are then going to raise the rise in COVID numbers, which are going to keep Buffalo locked down. And it's just this cycle that we're never going to break out of. So that was my original point on that is we, we're in this cycle that somehow we have to break out and somewhere in this chain, it has to snap or else we're just never going to get out of this. Well, what what breaks it is reopening. Right. Yeah, hopefully. Because they're, they're doing elective surgeries now. Yeah. And that's the first step in breaking that because that's going to bring the staff back. So the furloughed uh, staff, I know, I know a good amount of them. All of them were saying, I'm off until June, so I'll see you in June. And this was mid-April, and they're like, yeah, I'm going to take it, and you know, I'm, I'm going to make more on unemployment, so I'm going to go on vacation, basically. I, there, there's no stress because I'm not at work. I'm going to sit on my couch, drink beer, make more money on unemployment than I did while working, and wait till I get my job back in June, and then go back to work. Because mm-hmm. in this, I'm, you know, it's basically a union job, and I need seniority, and you know, I I don't want to not go to work, but here we go. And now we're running into the issue with unemployment because because we jacked unemployment so much, people don't want to go back to work because they're making more on unemployment right. than they did while working. And by printing money, we're just losing value in our own currency, but everybody doesn't know that. Everybody doesn't see that. They just see money coming from the big government and 
they're just sitting on the couch waiting for the next handout. And then gas is going to be insane. Milk's going to be insane. Bread's going to be insane. And the middle class is going to be stuck paying for the taxes to fund unemployment. Social security is going to get hit hard. It's just going to be a cycle of us going into a plummeting death of debt. And we can't do anything about it. Right. <laughs> Except vote, drink bourbon, and wait for the results. There you go. Drink bourbon. Key. Or if you're feeling antsy, you can get involved, um, volunteer for a political campaign, and, I don't know, run with somebody. In fact, change from the inside, as some people say. Yeah, be the change. Be the change. You know, Gandhi. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty sure that's who they had in mind. <laughs> like, be like Gandhi. <laughs> yeah, don't eat. <laughs> Gandhi. <laughs> That's one of my favorite lines in Hook with Robin Williams. Remember when they're sitting at the giant family dinner table and they're all surrounded by empty bowls and everybody's just eating like ferociously. Get you triggered. No, no, no. He's everybody around him's eating ferociously, all the kids that don't age, right? And then he's sitting there and he's like, What are you guys eating? And they're like, You have to believe. You have to believe that the food's actually in the plates. In, in all the dishes, and Robin Williams is sitting there, and he's just looking at empty bowls because he doesn't believe it yet. And he's like, what are you talking about? Gandhi eats more than this. And I <laughs> cried. And then finally, after like three days or whatever, he believed, and then he started seeing all the food that was surrounded by him and all the dishes, and then he was able to eat and feel full. There you go. But he had a, it was a manifestation. It's a good movie. So it's I'm, I'm going to get you triggered here. All right, perfect. One, never seen that movie. Two, I do not like Robin Williams. He's too much of a caricature for me. What do you mean he's too much of a he's character? He's the, the same thing as like Jim Carrey. Then why not are you a fan friends, of Jim Carrey. Then why are you friends with me? Because you're authentic. Oh, and they're not. I don't know them personally, but from what I see in their see in their movies, they're too much of a, a elaborate, like outlandish character. And I'm just like, you know what? Yeah. I'm done with you. Yeah, those actors are acting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can't stand you sometimes. Do you like Jim Carrey? Duh. Oh, I really? referenced him before we started filming. You did? Yeah, we were talking... Or what Were we filming? I don't even know. I don't know when we started this pod, but remember when you were talking about the Acer monitor and I said, yeah, Ace Ventura delivered it? Oh, yeah. You don't remember the first Pet Detective? Did you see the first Pet Detective? No. I don't like him. Oh, me neither then. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I'm, like, nauseous. Why? He's just... He's too outlandish. That you- None of his stuff... Like... Again, this goes back to what you and I talked about a while ago, is I like authenticity when it comes to movies and scenes and TV shows. That's why I like Parks and Rec a lot, is because they're basically the exact same person they are in real life. Do you know why Jim Carrey got into comedy? No. His family member was on their deathbed, and he would perform... Wow, way to make me feel like a dick. He would perform improv skits to them to make them laugh, because he knew that they were depressed. That doesn't change my view on him. Perfect. Perfect. Throw death in my face and be like, Derek, see, you should Just, like him now. It's a true story, bro. That's why he got into comedy. That's that's what started it. But okay, the the faces that he makes in, in his character in all of these movies are not, they're way too over the top. Which, which is, is why, why I don't like Robin Williams, too, because he's way over the top in a lot of movies. And that's why they're both basic, like, they're the Hall of Fame of actors. No, that's yes. not acting then. It is. Oh, you can't God. just do that. Whatever. The, there's people that, like me, <laughs> who are authentic per you, where we're basically mimicking them. <laughs> I mean, the, the facial expressions, the, the witty humor, where it all came from. I mean, that's... Yeah, man. The people with the worst childhoods are the greatest comedians. Well, obviously. Right. There is, yeah, there is definitely a correlation between, like, you have a shitty life and mm-hmm. you're funny in comedy because you just are self-deprecating. You make fun of yourself. What what both of them do, did, rip, Robin Williams, is an art form. Like, that's that's an insane talent that you can't teach. It's one of a kind. Yeah. And I mean, Robin Williams talking to Matt Damon in a movie is 100% improv where the cameras just kept rolling. And Matt Damon was laughing so hard at what was being said to him that they just kept it in the movie because of how great it was. Because it was 100% authentic. You can't... I mean, you can't not like that. It's literally... I, I like Robin Williams more than Jim Carrey. 
Oh, here we go. Here we go. All right, so I'm starting to boil it down. Speaking of boiling, <laughs> speaking of boiling, we have to get into our cocktail section because there's some boiling of things that are involved in my cocktail. Really? So what time are we at? Dude, don't worry about it. All right, don't worry about These it. These cameras says. can record until tomorrow morning. I know, all day. All day. So, so yeah, so both of them bring an authentic aspect to the movies, and they're incredible talents, which is why they're famous. If we were famous, it would we be because famous. of something. We are famous. Because of our whiskey reviews, bro. We recorded 32 episodes and 16 special interviews. We have 123 subscribers. We have a lot of listeners that don't subscribe. And then we have listeners on other platforms that don't let us know that they listen until random conversations. So we're doing good. So we're famous. Yeah. I mean, we're we're not famous. We're just we're known as two dudes that run a podcast that some people find entertaining and now I'm learning that in our first ever episode we talked about Disney more than we did whiskey. But look mm-hmm. what it led to. Right. It led to a, a custom t-shirt from a company that we partnered with and now we got this set right. up compared to a folding table. We're just going to roll and see what happens. Dude, that folding table was atrocious. It was full of stains, but it was for the boys. <laughs> And it allowed us... We, we made do with what we had. Yeah, it allowed us to get off the ground, and that's all that matters. It was our airplane that we were building while flying. Yeah, but if Jim Carrey <laughs> was flying, I wouldn't want to be on that airplane. Just saying. Bring it back. Why don't you bring something else back, like the beat for the cocktail section, so we can keep this rolling? Cocktails. You like that little pause in there? Yeah, I like that little pause in there. I hiccuped. No, I'm just kidding. Real quick, these tripods are dope, dude. Right? More official than our Leaning Tower Pisa we had before. Yeah. It was like one bar that was hanging up 14 feet above the other stuff, and it was if any br- like breath on it would topple it over. Yeah, this is a, a, a stable platform. So, dude, right. we look legit. Cocktail section. Mine is called A Place in the Sun, bro. It's one ounce of fresh lemon, an ounce of fresh orange juice, Two ounces of whiskey and a red wine cordial. Wow. So to make it, this definitely will not fit on the cocktail section pop-up. Perfect. You shake and strain into a rocks glass with ice. You layer in the red wine cordial. You layer it, dude, because it's thick. It's like a paste. Thick you, mama. You garnish this with an orange peel. So to make the cordial, you... Uh, you pull out a saucepan. I'm going to go Gordon Ramsay. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Pull out a saucepan over medium heat. You simmer a bottle of Shiraz with one cup of orange, two cinnamon sticks, a half cup of sweet vermouth, half cup of pomegranate, uh, grenadine, and a quarter cup of smoked maple syrup. You just saute that, basically, boil it down, and then you come up with your cordial, and then you pour it into the glass. Are we making a potion? Yeah, dude, it's the dark arts, and this is going to get you hammered. How many servings does this make? That's one. You have to do all that roasting and sauce panning for one drink? Yeah, dude. That's what it said. Oh, my God. I know, but it's essentially what you're doing is take this, this glass, right? Right, right? And then your cordial will literally be a layer on the bottom. It'll layer. It'll be a nice layer. But that's where the f- the uh, the flavor comes from. So then what's on the top again? Uh, from there, it's the one ounce of fresh lemon, an ounce of fresh orange juice, two ounces of whiskey on top of that. Interesting. All surrounded with ice. And then you just throw on an orange garlic. So you don't stir it at all? You gar- just wait? Garnish. You just love it that it's You can stir like it, but the cordial's a thick paste, so it'll just lie in the bottom of the glass. So you just stir the rest of the ingredients real quick so they're all to the same temp and then throw on that orange peel garnish and enjoy a place in the sun cocktail. Wow. Nailed it. Yeah. Look at that. All right. Mine is drink of the giant. You know, giant, man. We're giant. Huge. Yeah, we're... I don't... Never mind. Yeah. So drink of the giant. (laughs) This is basically a take on your whiskey sour. Okay. It is two ounces of Empire Rye. Three quarters of an ounce of lemon juice, one half ounce of maple syrup, and one half ounce of egg whites. So basically you're doing the, the same thing that you would do with a whiskey sour where you shake it once without the ice. 
Then you shake it with the ice to get that frothiness on the top. You put it in a uh, glass, and there's your cocktail, man. Boom. I love whiskey sours. So good. So good. But, yeah, so those are the the two drinks. One you have to have a chemistry degree to make. The other one you just, whatever, doing whatever I can. I don't put, like, the the instructions on how to make it on that cocktail board. Unless it's really easy. All these would be crazy. Yeah. Yeah. We're good, though. We'll make it work. Yeah, we're good. I'm going to put it in super fine print so nobody can read it, but you know it's there. (laughs) For Cocktail Tuesday and Cocktail Thursday, we'll spell everything out with a nice picture and and make it a little bit easier for everybody. Where can they find those posts? On our Instagram and Facebook. There you go. Nailed it. Buffalo Happy Hour 12. Get it. Or the Buffalo Happy Hour on Facebook. So I was still so salty about that guy. He won't message me back. The Buffalo Happy Hour guy. Because he probably doesn't exist. Probably. I should message Instagram and be like, listen, take this imposter out of here. I know. You We're the real re- Buffalo happy hour. You should report it as spam. Yeah. Watch. He, he like issues us a cease and desist. <laughs> yeah. That'd be ridiculous. <laughs> so, dude, I got a question for you. Out of all of the whiskey that we've tried so far, which one's your favorite? Here we go. Which one would you take home to mama? You know what I'm saying? Well, mom died, so... Jesus Christ, why would you say that? <laughs> um, here we go. <laughs> oh, I can't stand you. <laughs> I can't even see them all. We drank too many. This is like putting you on the spot. I don't know why I thought of this, but we have so much up here. Finish the larceny, by the way. You're welcome. Um, Took you long enough, dude. I finished three in the time it takes you to finish one. I love how on last week you're like, dude, as soon as this run is over, I'll let you try some of the 1792 small batch. Then I get a snap the other day. Gone. I'm like, nice. Thanks, Mike. Appreciate it. I'll buy more. It's, it's actually uh, it's priced really well, yeah. so I'm not too worried. So if I had to pick one uh, to bring home to Mama, I'd probably... I'd probably go with Hartman's, but it's tough because which uh, one? They're straight bourbon, but the the other one that I would want, I think it's over there. I think it's on the second shelf, but it's hidden. Uh, what's behind Briar Brothers? Iron Smoke and Tommy Rotter. Oh, and then the other Southern Tier one is is next to them, right? Yep. Um, and uh, no, it's not over there then. Steelbound. Maybe it's up top. I can't see them all. Black button. Yeah, which black buttons? Uh, we got the four grain straight, the collab, and the single barrel. What are you new here? I just can't see them. I just remember drinking them. Which one? I'd probably do their uh their straight. The last one you said. The single barrel. Yeah, single yeah. barrel. There you go. You. Probably either the Hartman Dry or the Three Chord Rye. I'm a huge Rye guy. Three Chord Rye was really good. Really good. Yeah. The two times hop we crushed like 15 bottles of. Yeah, I have another bottle up there. <laughs> it just goes down so smooth, bro. I know. But the others were like delicacies. Larceny 92 is like a, it's not an everyday. It could be if you're feeling, if you're feeling frisky, but. How do we get more shelves? I don't know. Because we have so much now. Like we're doubling up, but eventually, like, what do we have? One, two, three, four, five, six. We have like ten more spaces and we're done. That's what I'm saying. We might have to just do the labels that are framed. Oh yeah, true. We so so the that. artsy the artsy thing that I came up with, um, that Derek approved of, because obviously it's gotta get approved by the C suite of the <laughs> podcast, is removing the labels from the bottles and then making a collage and framing it. And then that way you can see all the labels of all the bottles that we've had. It takes up less of a footprint per se than a bottle. But then that way, A, we can either recycle the bottles or fill them with water. Um, There's also something in the works for patrons. Once we introduce patrons of things that we can do with our products that we've consumed, uh, things like that. But I mean, there's a lot of stuff in the works. You know, we're trying to we're trying to figure it out, make it work. But and then we can actually line these shelves with full bottles instead of empty ones. Correct. So we can pour ourselves another drink. Yeah, and then that way people don't think we're ridiculously high levels of alcoholics. 
I mean, they can make what they want. They can't. It's think all what true. They want. <laughs> so yeah, they're not. You, you wrong. know what they say about rumors? They're all true. Is the, is it rumors or stereotypes? Oh, both. Nailed it. Nailed it. <laughs> Should we rate this thing? Yeah, man. Let's get to it. We didn't write. What did we have last week? We had the 17, 1792. We didn't write that down. Seventeen ninety two full proof is not on the board yet, but nice. it will be next week. Sure will. So let's rate this thing. Label and branding. For Christ and s- Christ grist. Christ grist. It's a G. Oh, not it's a C. It's grist. Yeah, grist and <laughs> grist and saw. saw. <laughs> 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 Uh-huh. 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 Do, you, do you know how many <laughs> do you know how many dudes it takes to screw in a light bulb how many none it's already lit fam uh-huh. 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 I hate myself <laughs> <laughs> they uh they stick with the saw seam or Jesus what did I just say the saw theme they stick with the saw theme when they're look at, when they do the their other products too I'm pretty sure one of them is like a red sawmill which is another one of their rye whiskeys. I could be wrong, but they don't even have this one on their website. I think this one is they. So their red saw was a Empire Rye as well. The mash bill for that was eighty five fifteen. But maybe they just started marketing it Empire Rye, so they can get that name out there. I, I feel like the Empire Rye is a very very new thing. And all these distilleries are banding together to form the Empire Rye brand. When you're talking about like in that on the national level, could be. I want to reach out and ask them, see what they have to say about it. I also want to meet Saw. So Saw it. label branding, I'm giving them in hard A. Yep, I'll do that. I like that. It's original. Yeah. I like it. I give it an. I a. like this wooden cork at the top. I don't know why, but corks really do it for me. Like the top of the corks. Yeah, when you spell them correctly. Yeah. How did you think you spell it earlier? I was having a brain fart because I didn't eat. It, this was pre-launch when I was mentally shot, and I had a uh, a moment where I was trying to figure out how to spell cork, because I started lunch by doing research for this episode, and uh, couldn't spell it, man. Couldn't spell it. I ended it up spelled? trying to spell it Q U O R K, and I'm like, that ain't right. So cork. I, yeah, so I went to Google and I typed in want uh, <laughs> the thing that seals wine bottles. Hit enter, and then. It showed Google up. was automatic. Like, we need to slow this guy's interest <laughs> down. Yeah. So then the first thing that came up was a wine bottle. And then as I scrolled through the ads, because obviously the people that pay the most get to the top of the search, then I found wine cork with C O R K. And I'm like, wow, I'm an idiot. It was a full Tommy Boy moment. <laughs> it's like, all right, Richard. So yeah, it was a good time. But, anyways, all right, A. Also, wasn't a huge fan of him, too, by the way. Chris anyway, Farley? Yeah, let's get back to this. We'll talk about that after. Uh, nose. I'm going to fight you so <laughs> hard. He was too outlandish for me, man. He's authentic, dude. He is very authentic. I will give you that. Okay. I give it an A. I mean, <clears throat> you you know off the bat this is a rye. Oh, yeah. Just Absolutely. by the nose. I'm honestly not getting like a ton of other smells in your traditional rye, which is probably what they meant for this. They probably didn't mean for this to be some crazy elaborate rye. The Empire rye theme is very consistent. I mean, Black Button has an Empire rye. That smells very similar to this. Yeah. This is, so Empire, I don't know if there's a percentage required for empire rye yeah. i know that for rye it has to be so for a rye it has to be 51 percent rye and empire it has to be all in new york state but i don't know if like it has to be 85 percent because i think that black buttons was 85 too if i'm not mistaken i f- i feel like it does but i don't know offhand i mean i can look now that i have my phone this is so one thing that i did want to touch on with this i thought it was sweet at first but that could be those caramelized wood sugars that you're getting from that char three but there's no corn in here, which for a rye, normally corn is what gives you that like well-rounded sweetness at the end. Sure. There's no corn in here at all. So what you're tasting, that sweetness, is more related to the wood sugars than it is the corn, which is giving you not a sweetness per se, but more of a like a sweet oak. Are you getting that? 
that's all I get in the initial taste mm. is wood sugar. Which I, is different for a rye. I'm giving this an A+. plus. Yeah. I like the initial taste a lot. Yeah, this is good. I will say, though, the ending note isn't much different from the initial taste for me. I'm not picking up any, like, high pepper content. I'm not picking any of that up. Um, maybe a little bit, like, right at the end. But I'm not getting any alcohol. Like, I thought smelling this, this was going to be high alcohol. I, I'm not getting that in the taste. It's it's relatively smooth compared to what I thought it was going to be. It is one dimensional. Um, I mean, this is this is still like an everyday drinker, though. Yeah. Oh yeah, I could smash this. Yeah. Ending note: I'm picking up just a little bit of a little bit of caramel, but I'm I still I might confuse that with the wood sugars. Yeah, and a little bit of cracked pepper at the end. Yeah. So we'll just do caramel and pepper. I couldn't tell on their site. So this distillery was started in 2013. So you would have to think it can't be like this isn't an eight-year-old bourbon, obviously, because they wouldn't have started it back then. This is a relatively young bourbon or uh, rye. So it could be. I'm interested to see the future of this product when it has more time to sit in the barrel. That's what I'll say. I think that this is... I don't remember seeing... Again, this isn't specifically on its site. So I don't know how long this is aged for. But if I were to guess, I would say that it's aged like around... Th- like three? Three years aged in a char three barrel. I'm going to laugh in the like. Well, it's 2.85, so, yeah, three years. <laughs> we'll, we'll tag them in this, so hopefully they comment yeah, and uh, let us know, because I, I'm very interested on this and their other products, too. Yeah, it definitely can't be that old. Also, give us a phonetic pronunciation on how to pronounce Hanoi or whatever. Don't know how to do that. <laughs> I love it. Dude, so- I, I, like, I want to put a little bit more and put a little drops in there, because this is very oily, too. We should point that out in this section. So for the end note, what do you want to give it? A plus? A plus, yeah. It's very, very oily. All right, then we'll knock like out the bottle, dude. It, I was actually kind of terrified to pour out of it just because yeah, of the shape. It's, it's tough. But it doesn't do that bad of a job. It gives you that false sense of security because there's that ring around it. It's a short neck. That's what they used to say to me. There you go, dude. Yo, our chairs are going off this episode. Oh, yeah. Can you give me a little dropper, dude, too? Yeah, when I'm done with it. <laughs> What are you doing, you amateur? You didn't finish your first glass? I don't know. I was not drinking with Mike Kelly. Whoa. All right, dude. Take my glass. I got the bottle. <laughs> there you go. We're six feet away, so it's tough for me to reach all the way over there. Hey, man. That's how Rona transmits. My cousin and I were, like, literally neck and neck taking these awnings off, which we can talk about in a little bit. If we have Rona, we have it now. There's your drop. It was dude. so much fun. Yeah, you were doing some home rental projects, and oh, you yeah. took the awnings off the off of the exterior of your house, which was a solid move. Uh, happy for you, man. That's that's great. Thanks, dude. It was a tough tough battle, you know. All right. So, do those drops change anything? It had to. This is so oily. This coats the inside of your mouth, similar to like the new riff. New riff. You could taste that after. Yeah, new riff was literally like drinking olive oil. It was very good. But. It was good. It was oily. And, dude, it was like a loaf of bread drenched in olive oil going down. With the oil, or with the water in there, it takes away that char sweetness, and it brings out the pepper to me. Way smoother, and then it just adds the pepper. That's it. I agree with you. I agree, I agree, I agree. <laughs> It makes it dry, actually. Like I can, right, it, right, my right. tongue is gritty right now. That's interesting, dude. I've never had a whiskey transform that way with this, with the water. That's really weird that that it made it dry. The ending note. 
Yeah, the onion note's drier. But it just kind of sits and it hugs the top of your mouth. Mm-hmm. I mean, it really doesn't burn anything crazy. It doesn't burn anything going down. No. You don't it, feel it in the, in the pit of your stomach like you did with a foolproof. So how much was this? 30 bucks, I think? Yeah, it was like 20 30 bucks. This is a very, very good ride to get for 30 bucks. No kidding. Like this compared to what we've had for the same price point, Cask and Crew, I would choose this any day over Cask and Crew. But that's because this is an, I mean, dude, a $30 Empire Rye is almost unheard of. That's what I'm saying, yeah. Where a, a, Cask and Crew is not Empire. Yeah, I mean, a Cask and Crew is like a specific flavored whiskey. Well, they had the rye flavor too, though. Made for cocktails. Yeah, but like, I mean, most people would go for a walnut toffee yeah, or a ginger right. spice, sure. mm-hmm. roasted orange. I'm, I, I like this more without the water in it. There's like no smoke to it. No. It's it's smooth. It's good. I like this more without the water in it. What do you think? Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. I agree. <laughs> Why do you do that every time I'm taking a sip? Oh, God. All right. So, so, our, so our followers, when they party with us at the whenever the run is over with Buffalo Happy Hour Happy Hour party. The boys get, from Briar Brothers were, at, were asking about that. Yeah. When we're rescheduling it. They're going to be there, so come on down. Well, it's whenever we can get rid of the Ronin, bro. Yeah. We have to wait a long time until we're in phase four to have gatherings, but we'll get there. All right, so final rating before we uh, get too far along in the conversation. Yeah. Give me that countdown. All right. Three, two, one. 91. 90. 90.5. Nice. Nailed it. Quick math. Even Mike could do. Nailed it. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> this is... So like we were saying, this is a very well-rounded whiskey that is perfect for your everyday smasher. We picked this up at Outlet Liquor in Cheek to Waga, Cheek to Vegas, uh, or is it to Pew? It might be, yeah, I don't know. I think that's to Pew. I think it's still Cheek to Waga. Nailed it. I don't know, man. You live out there. What do you mean? You're five minutes down. You're five minutes south, dude. No, I'm like at least six. <laughs> oh, great. I'm out. I'm out of everything. I'm out of, I'm out of loot. First world problems. Yeah, seriously, I'm out of loot. I'm out of whiskey. You got a growler there. I know I should open it. Go ahead. It's empty, but it's fine. I got uh, four Briar Brother beers in there. If you want some, we're giving them a lot of shout outs in this episode. I know, but, but they're the boys, dude. Yeah, they're the like, boys. I mean, there's no we free shout outs, but at the same time, like they we're do going such a good to, job. We're gonna go golfing with them too, dude. We're, we're talking to them there, and it. So <clears throat> Joel maps to me. And Dylan maps you. That, that's what we gathered. How? Like personality? No. Like um Oh in golf in talent. Yeah. Yeah, golf ability. Yeah. We're gonna get choiced on their beer anyways, dude. <laughs> it doesn't matter. We're all gonna be on the same dude, playing field. It's gonna be so much fun. Yeah. Get a foursome going and we bring the cameras with us. It will be a riot. And the drone? Yeah, and the drone. Yeah. We gotta be do we need someone sober to run the drone though? That's true, that's true. I agree, yeah. I agree, I agree. I agree, I agree, I <laughs> agree. All right, we'll, we'll so, talk about that. Okay, we'll so it. 90.5 is what we're giving this. Very good everyday drinker. Highly recommend. Empire Rye. Let them know if you try this. We need to help New York and Buffalo specifically put Empire Rye on the map. Mm-hmm. We're, we're going to be monumental in this process, I'm telling you right now. The sure Buffalo are. Happy Hour boys are going to bring Empire Rye to the forefront. That's right, Richard. <laughs> It was a good marketing tech uh, technique by New York distilleries yeah. to patent, kind of patent, but this, because you already have a whiskey, you already have a bourbon, the rye was just out there. You have Canadian rye, but within the continental United States, there wasn't a state that owns rye. Mm-hmm. So it's, I, I'm so excited to see Empire Rye grow. And then you're seeing also these single malts grow too. Yeah. I wonder who's going to take control of that. There's people silently doing it, Mm -hmm. and they're going to come out and blow it up. I'm excited. It's going to be very exciting in the future. Yeah. So we we talked a little bit about my uh, home improvement project. It was exciting. I don't know who thought awnings in the first place were were a very good idea, especially like tin awnings. Probably the Pollocks, dude. Dude. Yeah. They're they're known as the Cheek to Waga awnings. Uh, I live in West Seneca, so they're not Cheek to Waga, but for some reason, they were the exact same I have on my income property yeah they were brutal to take off all of them were painted over 
So you had to chip the paint off before you can even put the socket wrench over it. It was, it took, we had 10 awnings to take off. It took five hours of us breaking our back. My back hurts so bad. I, uh, I believe it. I feel really bad. It was a good time. It was a fun time, man. I'm sure. It was great. I feel horrible. But the good thing is, is the glue was not on there very well. So it was just these bolts that were holding them on there. Nice. So as soon as you took the bolts off, it was easy to kind of push the awning off. But I remember Kennedy, we had to really, really pry it away from the siding, and that was not good. No. So now we got to buy some shutters. We have to decorate the outside of the house, and it'll be looking like we we were trying to make this house look better. That's what I'm saying, dude. That's the goal. That's what I'm saying. Oh, yeah. Increase that property value. Increase that equity. What are you on? Uh, what? direction are you on from on the lawn i'm back to oh the first actually i'm at uh right diagonal so you've done all four yeah nice yep so you're back at the start yeah i gotta cut it this week weather depending but it's already starting to get long dude she grows bro and she grows just like that hair take that hat off show everybody what they're working with they already saw it in the other episode if you don't know what my hair looks like, watch last week's episode and you'll see it in full view where I looked like the West Side Story and the Outsiders at the same time. I did research because I didn't know, but West Side Story and the Outsiders are two different books. The mm-hmm. Outsiders is what we read in school, and then West Side Story is based in Manhattan. Yeah, the Outsiders is with Pony Boy, I'm pretty sure. Pretty sure. But out- Outsiders is based in like Oklahoma or whatever. What did uh, Chris Traeger play? What What book? I don't know. I was too busy watching Jim Carrey. Not, Throwing not it right back it. in your face, bro. Not feeling it. I don't know what you're not feeling other than greatness. Smacking you right in the dome piece, bro. Dome right. piece. That's the end of this episode. Well, all right, everybody. Take care. No. Thanks for your time. <laughs> follow us on Give YouTube. Give all the plugs, bro. Go for it. Yeah, follow us on YouTube. Follow us on Instagram and Facebook. Smash that to subscribe button. It's free to do. Right might there. might as well do it. Right there. It is free. It doesn't cost you anything. All you need is a Gmail email. And then that way you can have a YouTube account, and then in which case you can click subscribe. Definitely helps us out. Um, Because oddly, when you go on YouTube and you look to see how legit someone is, you look at how many subscribers they have. So it doesn't do anything for us, tell you that. But uh, if it makes you feel better that we have over 100 subscribers, that'd be sweet. Outside of that, we do post on other social media platforms. You can find us everywhere. You can follow our personal pages. Doesn't matter. Whatever you want. So... Show us some love. We'll show you some love. We respond. And uh, this has been episode 33. Looking forward to episode 17 of the special interviews because that's going to be mega cool. So, question. Are we considering an essential business? Once these businesses start opening up, can we just go? As long as we meet the criteria, yeah. I mean, right now, Erie County has met five of the seven metrics. So, when we meet seven of the seven reopening metrics, I don't see why we couldn't perform a special interview where we maintain social distancing and proper sanitization does that mean we have to perform an interview with a mask because i'm out i don't think we need a mask as long as we're do the state law mandate is wear a mask if you cannot maintain proper social distancing but does it have a capa- like a, a person limit like is it still 10 people and above I don't Listen, know. I'm trying to plan my birthday party too at the end of this month, and I need to figure out how many people I can invite because I got a lot of friends. It's not happening by the end of the month, dude. Oh, it is. It's not. Watch. You're going to be here. The, maybe, the yeah, Gestapo's going to show up, <laughs> and we're going to be forced to shut down. Let's end this episode before we get in trouble. Right, perfect. Nailed it. All right. Episode 33. We're out.